Hello all. Welcome to the VoIP Traffic Analysis course on Pentester Academy. My name is Vivek Ramachandran and I'll be the instructor for this course. So in this video, we look at the course introduction, what we plan to cover and the lab setup. So the first question is, you know, why is VoIP Traffic Analysis even important to begin with? Now, if you noticed, most enterprises rely heavily on VoIP, both for internal as well as external voice-based communication. Now, in most enterprises, VoIP would be on a separate VLAN called the VVLAN or the Voice VLAN. And you might even see separate physical port connections available on you know, desktop stations. So VoIP is actually quite a complicated protocol especially when it comes to security and encryption, as this has a lot of options. Now, this is where as a practitioner, I've actually found that some of our customers did get some things wrong. And most of this can be deciphered just by looking at VoIP traffic. And this is really what I'm trying to teach you in this course. So what is the course agenda? So we will be looking very briefly at the protocol basics just enough so that we can begin our security analysis. Then we look at different combinations of VoIP traffic. Now we will be looking at SIP and RTP and hence the four combinations are SIP, RTP, both unencrypted. Uh, you know, SIP encrypted, RTP is not encrypted. The opposite, which is SRTP, that is RTP is encrypted. And then finally, SIP and RTP, both are encrypted. Now, the PCAP files we will use will actually span across different scenarios, uh, namely calling to voicemail, two-person calling, a conference call, as well as SIP messaging and DTMF. Now, the whole idea is to look at this traffic for each of these scenarios and understand where we can apply different decryption techniques. We'll also understand the challenges and limitations of when decryption can be applied. Now we look at a couple of decryption tools, including a custom plugin the team has written. Now at the very end, we will also look at VoIP register messages, understand how hashes present in these messages can be used to crack VoIP accounts. Last but not the least, even though we are conducting this entire course using PCAP files we've you know, pre-captured, We'll also show you how you can set up your own little home VoIP lab. Uh, now, as I mentioned, there's a team involved, a great team done a lot of good work, including the lab setups, PCAP captures and plugin development. And the team is Nishan, Jeswin and Ashish. Uh, you'll also see some videos at the very end of this course about how to set up the VoIP home lab from Nishant. Okay, so what is the lab setup? I'm going to be using Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, and the idea is to install the latest version of Wireshark and T-Shark on it. Now, you could use Windows, OS X, other Linuxes like Kali. However, keep in mind that, uh, you know, I have tested everything rigorously on Ubuntu, especially some of the tools. And some tools, of course, as usual, will not work on Windows. Okay, so let's jump right in. So I've already have a pre-installed Ubuntu VM 18.04, something you can create as well. I don't want to waste time in showing you how to create a basic VM. So I'm going to run the sudo apt update command first. Seems to be taking a lot longer than it usually does. Okay, so what we are going to do is look at the version of Wireshark available in the Ubuntu default repository. So, you can do that using sudo apt cache madison wireshark. Oops. Just gonna... Okay. 
My bad, I misspelled Wireshark. Okay. So what you'd actually notice is typically the version of Wireshark in the Ubuntu repository is actually an older one. So we see 245, I think uh, 26 is probably already here as of uh, making these videos. So what we can actually do is go ahead and either one option is, you know, download the sources and do all the installation from scratch. I generally don't like doing that because when the source changes, you know, you may have to figure out a lot of dependencies in case newer libraries, etc., are required. Uh, this is really where what we can do instead is pull the latest version of Wireshark and T-Shark from Wireshark's own private repositories. Now, to do that, we'll have to add that repository to the list of repositories APT is going to search in. So I'm going to do a sudo apt add repository and the repository name is Wireshark dev stable if I remember correctly. Just going to double check it. Yes, that is the one. So let's add this. This may take a minute or so. And if you're using other Linuxes, I would once again advise you to do the same thing. Uh, just make sure you have the latest and greatest version simply because that makes it you know, so much more easier and not have to deal with bugs. Okay, so now let's actually look at the version of Wireshark available to us. So you would find that uh, Wireshark would be pulled from both repos and we'll see both versions. So we can clearly see uh, that the Wireshark dev stable repository has 261, right? So let's actually do an install for both the uh, Wireshark and T-Shark. By default, we'll be pulling in from the first repository, uh, which has the newer version. So let's run this install. I'm really excited about this course. Uh, you'll see that we cover a lot of interesting things with respect to uh, VoIP traffic analysis, especially encryption. We've taught this in multi multiple classroom settings and our classroom students have always been very, very happy uh, with all the new things that they've learned. So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be the same for many of our online students. Of course, suggestions and additions are always welcome uh, we are security tube on Twitter, so you can tweet to us or write to us on our support channel. Okay, I'm actually just going to briefly pause the video while the installation is going on. Okay, so we get this prompt, should non-super users be able to capture packets? Now we are going to be using PCAPs for most of our work, so doesn't really matter to us, but later if you do decide to create your own lab and capture traffic, might as well do it as a non-privileged user. So I'm going to do a yes here. The installation continues. Now after this, I'm going to add the current user to the Wireshark group. And then finally, make sure that that group immediately reflects in uh, the list of groups we are allowed. Okay. So, so sudo user mod dash a dash g. The name of the group is Wireshark, and I'd like to add the current user, which is Vivek. Okay. However, if we look at our ID, we currently see that the Wireshark group hasn't been added. 
So one way is to log off and then log in once again. The other way is to use a program called new group and actually say, well, apply new group Wireshark immediately. Now, if you notice, Wireshark got added to the list of our groups. And at the very same time, current group also reflects as Wireshark. Okay, so let's actually open up Wireshark. Let's run it. Just make sure everything is installed properly. So there we go. Everything seems to be installed properly. It's 261. Similarly, let's verify that P Shark is installed properly as well. There you go. T Shark is installed. 261. Fantastic. So this is all I had in mind for this video. In the next video, we'll begin with basic VoIP analysis. Thank you and please recommend us to your friends and colleagues if you enjoyed this one.